What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are doing round two of three of this mock draft. So if you guys are new, check out round one first. We're going to do a quick little recap right here as well and stay tuned tomorrow for round number three. Of course, it's been quite a fun journey. I like to be able to change things up. So a lot of times you'll see like I might not make the perfect pick. But that's because I thought I did it the week before, and sometimes it's really nice just to create some new fresh content because of the fact it makes it more fun for you, makes it more fun for me, and we get to explore a whole lot of new options because the teams don't always make the best picks. So we still make ones that are logical so long as it does make sense. And of course, if you guys are new, we'd love for you guys to stick around anyways. If you guys don't want to check out round one, want to get the quick recap right here. But a lot of trades happen. So... First off, we had some big trades up in here, like um, the Raiders moving up for C.J. Stroud. Seems to fit the McDaniels system. Yes, McDaniels should be gone. They can't afford it. That's just the truth. So we had stuff like that move in. Um, we had we didn't have many trades ups actually at all. Uh, the Giants moving up for Anthony Richardson got some pushback from some Giants fans, but. I'm going to be honest, I want Anthony Richardson in Brian Dable's hands, so for me, I think it's totally worth it. I don't think Daniel Jones really has the caliber of play to be able to get you to a Super Bowl. If Anthony Richardson hits, he does, so I just that's just going to be my guy right there. And um, yeah, I mean, we had to trade up here with Jalen Hyatt. I kind of wish I did the Steelers to move up there, but again, I think Casey, or I think Kansas City would have been more likely to accept the higher price point of, uh, I think, what I sent for this pick anyways. And Jalen Hyatt was the choice. Otherwise, that would have been my pick right here. So the Vikings were sitting in a very nice spot because they would have been the beneficiary of whoever fell between Jalen Hyatt or Jalen Jones because I would have loved the Steelers to get Jalen Jones. He definitely fits their system. But I digress. Pick number 32, traded back. And uh, the Chiefs, you guys are sitting here. Yes, that fifth-year contract is lucrative. But at the same time, you guys are such a good franchise. I don't necessarily think you are fully on board for just like only going for the fifth year contract. I feel like your team is definitely good enough to where you can just simply upgrade. You aren't filling a bunch of holes. So if there is a better edge rusher in that time, I don't necessarily think it's a bad option to be able to not have that choice. Of course, I kind of do wish I'd got a little bit more for you. It would not have affected this mock draft though. So uh, again, hindsight 2020. I could have gotten maybe a fourth rounder to be able to move up for that spot. Didn't happen. Doesn't Again, doesn't matter. It's not going to affect this mock draft, but I digress. Uh, this pick, I definitely want to go after an edge rusher. I still think that you guys need to get one. Uh, Jerzon Newton's the only other dude who is like in consideration for this, and I don't think he's coming out based on the fact that PFF didn't even have him ranked. So it's a real shame. It's a real shame, but... I'm going to show some love for my number two overall player in the draft here. Uh, Y'all are used to me getting him at this point. 275, six foot four. I think he's a better version of Miles Murphy with just so much less hype. He went toe to toe with Broderick Jones and was able to win that matchup pretty fair and square majority of the game. You guys know this if you guys are used to the channel. If you guys are curious, why the hell do I like Isaiah McGuire so much? Come to the Discord perfectly free i do stuff over there like all 22 tape studies with you guys that when it's not the holidays or finals is something that i love to do with you guys you get to hang out with me we get to watch some good tape that sometimes you can't watch I can't put it on youtube because of copyright issues so you're the only one missing out again i would love to have you there we already we just breached 400 people on it it's ridiculous literally three weeks ago in around like 120 so monster growth thanks to you guys you guys have been absolutely awesome for doing that but again, you also have fan mock drafts that we're going to be doing there. I think actually this Friday we have our first one. So sneak preview to maybe what's coming this weekend. I digress. So yeah, just please join there. If you guys have issues with my board, ask me there. Ask me in the comment section, but I'm going to just tell you, come to the Discord. I'll show you why. Uh, pick number 33 for the Eagles. Traded back with the Steelers here. Again, there's not really much that... I mean, I just wanted the Steelers to be able to move up and select a cornerback because it really doesn't matter. And we had the benefit the benefit of being able to select the falling corner here. I do know that Lane Johnson is contemplating retirement, but he said two years from now, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not going to be going hauling ass to be able to draft a tackle. I think Garrett Williams, Devon Witherspoon, both of them, excellent options. Pick whichever one that you want. I had Garrett Williams as a top 15 player before his ACL tear. 
I think that the Eagles could certainly be perfectly happy going in free agency and grabbing somebody, but I can't guess that right now. Of course, you never know. Somehow, Bradbury might be like, you know, I'm, I'm happy here. Give me $10 million, give me $12 million a year, and they'll pay him. He won't do that. But there's a, there's a scenario in this world where that does happen, and that's a great choice for you to keep him over drafting a cornerback like Garrett Williams, but Garrett Williams is a beast. I do love him. Pick number 34. So this is the, we did not get Anthony Richardson this time, but we've ended up with Will Anderson because, of course, we had the guy who fell, and then we have Trenton Simpson. Two amazing defensive pieces. So, you know, linebacker, edge rusher, nice. I do think defensive interior should still be looked at. Uh, I just, uh, who cares about the safeties? No no one's really good in the safety class except Jail Skinner, uh, who, to be fair, definitely is on my list. And... I think I kind of want to trade back here because, funnily enough, these two players feel perfect for the Seahawks, just not at 34. And there's some good players left on the board, so I know that it is worth moving up for. You still have guys like um, Devon Witherspoon. Again, teams who need a corner definitely should be moving up for this guy. And I'm trying to find a team right now, already drafted one right here for the Panthers. I could definitely see the, uh, the Falcons moving up for one. You know, of course, I'm pretty sure we moved back and got Keely Ringo for the cards, but like, hell, the Raiders, we moved up with the Raiders and they still need a corner. They still do. And I don't, this corner class is super thin after this. I mean, you got Tyree Stevenson that, to be fair, I think he fits the Raiders a little bit more. Probably going to be my pick at number 40 because I love him. And if you guys are wondering what's below my face, that is my big board. So I know everybody's going to have their own issues with it. There's definitely people who are going to see a lot of guys on here like, how the hell do you have them that low? Some people are going to be like, how the hell do you have guys that high? I put it there because I want you guys to see my board exclusively, but also I like to blend it with the mock draft so that you guys get the nice balance of what I think, what others think to give you a good overall representation of what the draft should be. But there's still great players on the board. Devon Witherspoon is my primary target to move up for. I would say Tanner McKee should be as well. I do see the Saints here, and they're cooking with guys like Andy Dalton. Would not be surprised if Derek Carr is a good target for this team. I think the NFC South is going to see Derek Carr come to them, and you know it's going to be a battle between the Panthers as well. I mean, hell, the Falcons could also want him too. But every team in this division might want him to replace their veteran slash rookie. So teams that are looking for a QB, I would still say that the Falcons could be in the running, but I don't think Tanner McKee is an upgrade. I don't think enough teams are within range to where it scares me to to go after a QB, except for the Panthers here. That's actually a good spot to move back from. I think the Saints are going to make a move. I think they are, because I'm not going to project to a certain team. Uh, the Panthers could move up here for sure, but I just know the Saints are very aggressive. And um, we're going to go back to the chart. So people... You can't blame me if I'm going to be trading a pick. Um, So pick, like, it's all based off of numerical value. Uh, 41 is 490, just to make sure it is 41. So 490 points going all the way up to 560. That's a 70-point value, and that's 112 and higher. We have a 105. We are going to offer this. The trade is accepted. And now the Saints have moved up to be able to get a rookie quarterback who is pretty much Andy Dalton, but younger, cheaper, just a better deal. And this quarterback class, my God, Sam Hartman didn't even declare. He's going and transferring probably to Notre Dame. This quarterback class, mighty thin, mighty thin. I don't even think there's probably 10 draftable quarterbacks in this class. And I'm talking about like backup slash third stringers. Ridiculously bad QB class. And it was supposed to be a really good deep one. A lot of guys decided to come back and transfer, so... Here we are. Pick number 35 for the Cardinals. We traded back, got some great draft capital. Still drafted, if I'm not mistaken, Keely Ringo. And we did. So that's great. Love that for us. Um, Okay, so with this pick, corner, already solved. Offensive line, we definitely need to take a peek. We do. Offensive tackle-wise, I like Blake Freeland. I don't really necessarily think DJ Humphreys needs to be replaced. All the other spots in the line, maybe and especially the interior. So I'm looking at the guys who are on the board. You got Voorhees here. He's just such a solid, consistent veteran, man. I thought about trading back with this pick. Again, you have teams like C or like 
You have some teams like, um, not Seattle, we just traded back with Seattle. You have teams like the Raiders that might be wanting to move up and be able to at least secure pieces to compete in their division. But when you have a great player who's just going to make an instant impact like Andrew Voorhees, he's had some injuries, he's a little bit older, definitely worth taking a nice shot on. I love Luke Whipler to death, great player, but Voorhees is my number one interior offensive lineman on my board, not named Peter Skaronsky if you think he's a guard. So like getting him here is phenomenal value. You've already got a lot of extra draft capital based on your trade back, and now you're just sitting pretty. You're able to draft someone of t- Andrew Voorhees' talent level, and I think it's great. It's great. You're getting solid veterans day one for a quarterback that we don't know when he'll be back, especially with athleticism. I would just urge to kind of like take your time on bringing Kyler back, but making sure that you have veterans ready to play, kind of key, kind of key. And Andrew's definitely going to bring that on a nice cheap contract there in the second round. Pick number 36, we got Will Levis in the first. Y'all know exactly where I'm going with this. Blake Freeland's on the board. He's going to be a consistent starter for you. You know, I did not like Bernard Ryman that much. I think this is going to be great competition for him. Worst case scenario, Blake can kick into guard. BYU, I mean, obviously, they're they're really, like, they're NFL ready coming in. Brady Christensen didn't like him that much, but thought he'd be a really nice guard. Ended up being so. So I think Blake Freeland could be in a similar category. He is 6'8", though. It'd be kind of weird to have a 6'8 guard. Can happen. But, um, you know, Blake Freeland, definitely worth at least taking a peek at. At least taking a peek at. Pick number 37 for the Falcons. There are still some killer edge rushers on the board. And I want to see who we took. I think we took Miles Murphy, which y'all have like significantly less sacks since I think the start of even last year. And he's like 37 and then it's a huge gap up to like 60 for the next highest or next lowest. So you got Miles Murphy. You can kick him to the inside. But at this point, I'm going to be looking actually at Tyreek Stevenson here. I don't think people are giving this guy enough credit. So where is Tyreek on my board? He's probably like at 54. Like watch this. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. He was literally right off the screen. So I'm a big fan of Tyreek Stevenson. He's a big six foot, 212 pound corner who's really good in man to man. The thing is, I know you don't necessarily need him here at pick 90 or at pick number 37. It's not the biggest need, but I don't see that many corners in next year's class. I don't see that many free agent corners that are going to be affordable enough to bring in that kind of can match the potential of Tyreek Stevenson. Again, he is built like a rock. You see Keely Ringo, people are like, wow, look at him. He's a physical freak, 6'2", 210. This guy is two pounds heavier at 6'0", can still run a 4'4". And he has some God-tier games in him. I think if you can get that to be more consistent with with AJ Terrell, I think that's very possible. This guy could be an absolute superstar, and you can have a lockdown duo for at least the next four years. So do yourself the favor. Test this out. I have not taken Tyreek Stevenson this high in a long time. He's still graded out as a first-round corner for me. It's just tough based on the fact that Miami was not that good. So many people left Miami that they would look at Tyreek and be like, yeah, you're going to be that high of a draft pick for us. But he's one of the best in that loaded Miami secondary. I think they have Kinchins in there as well as James Williams, who are amazing safeties. But Tyreek sometimes gets lost in uh, lost in translation there. Pick number 38 for the Rams. Offensive line still the position I would go after. However, there are such good edge rushers on the board. Linebacker too. Drew Sanders would be a nice addition to this team with Bobby Wagner there. Uh, I think Bobby might be up for a contract though. I digress. Edge rusher, you guys were willing to spend two firsts in a second to get a talented edge rusher. BJ Ojolari is built of the same mold that Brian Burns is. Similar weight, similar height, and um, incredible ceiling. Incredible ceiling. We also know that the Rams do not give a rat's ass about actually drafting the best player available. Uh, and that most likely pertains to the offensive line. Still, they like taking third round on linemen. We're going to respect that. Uh, for the Panthers, I think going after an edge rusher or a linebacker is crucial. And I think this edge rushing class, pretty damn good. We can get one probably here and be perfectly fine. It's kind of like the Chicago argument. We'll jump Chicago maybe for it. But Drew Sanders is the best linebacker on the board. I want to be able to make sure that we have... Uh, he, the comp is Brian Cushing for Drew, uh, for Drew Sanders. I think that's perfectly fine. He also can pair up as an edge rusher, was an edge rusher at Alabama for multiple years there, ended up translating back to linebacker, which he hadn't played since high school there for Arkansas this year. Looked at, 
honestly pretty damn solid. A little bit out of water here and there, but that's naturally going to happen if you haven't played the position at a higher level in multiple years. Pick 40. So we traded up. We got CJ. Now we got to do some damage control. Uh, Drew Sanders would have been perfect. Jack Campbell, I think, is a perfect Raider as well. Would love to have either of them on my team. But I also know this corner class, not necessarily the deepest. And a lot of people will try to stand up for the guys like DJ Turner, Caillou Blue Kelly. Like, there's some good guys for sure, but I want to hit on a true starter. I don't want to throw a dart at the board and pray I get a Ken Kohu, right? Uh, He's a slot, but... Devon Witherspoon deserves his respect. I do really like Devon Witherspoon. I haven't watched the All-22 because, again, for you guys who are in the Discord, you guys know how little tape there is on Devon Witherspoon All-22. And and I will re-emphasize this. I do not make my opinions on corners until I see All-22. I think you guys deserve the honest truth, and I think that you guys deserve for me to actually put in the work to be able to see the full rep rather than just telling you, like, Oh yeah, from this, I saw this. That's that's like nothing. I mean, hell, if you saw like a quarterback just throw a ball rather than who he's throwing to, not necessarily going to help you out in an evaluation. I think at the top of the route, seeing how they handle double moves, that's so crucial. And on game broadcast, you just can't see that. And out of respect for Devon, out of respect for you guys, I am not going to um, BS you guys and say that, like, yeah, done the full study on him, have it. And um, he deserves it. He deserves it. But once that tapes out, ooh, we're hopping on that. We're hopping on Discord as soon as that comes out. Pick number 41. So, oh, man. I mean, we've we've done quite a good job here. We've traded down, and I really like the idea of Mozzie Smith on this team. I do. Uh, line also, definitely something I would like to consider. A loose goon, for sure. But uh, defensive interior, Yeah. I love this idea of going after Mozzie Smith. I really like it. And I'm forgetting who I was looking at earlier. I'm tripping. I'm tripping on who I was looking at earlier. Tight end, I heard, is still on consideration, uh, in consideration. And Luke Musgrave, the only reason he's here is because of injury. He's an absolutely phenomenal tight end as a receiver. And you guys love your tight ends. I do know that is a very possible pick. Very close to Seattle as well. That's something I, de- I actually might do it. I might do it. I'm tripping on who I was looking at earlier, though, because I said, like, oh, yeah, we can get this guy or Mozzie Smith, but they'll probably be there at those respective picks. Don't think I looked at another edge rusher. Wow. I am tripping. That's insane. Um, But to be fair, I think tight end and defensive interior, not bad choices. Oh, Jail Skinner. There we go. Dude, Jail Skinner is really good, and this is a thin safety class. Let's go Jail Skinner. There's so many good options for this team. Uh, Jail Skinner definitely feels like he's going to be a Seahawk anyway. It's such a thin safety class. I really like him. You guys see where he is on my board at 46. And um, the more I watch him, the more I just really do like how he plays. I really do. So pick number 42 for the Browns. Edge rusher is plentiful. Edge rusher is nice. And edge rusher is needed. So uh, let's go after some crazy good talents here. And Andre Carter is one of them. He's 6'7", 260 pounds, hyper raw player, but my God, his potential is through the roof. I would love to have him here. Pick number 43, uh, Seattle, we could honestly trade back again. We could, because I was literally just talking about going Mozzie Smith, and I don't think I'm taking him for a hot minute. Ooh, the Steelers could want Mozzie Smith. That'd be such a good fit. I would love to see the Steelers draft him. Steelers fans, what do you think about that? Um, We're going to go Mozzie Smith here. We're going to show some love. This guy's going to go off on the combine. Uh, you know, he isn't necessarily this high on my board. Like, I'll show you guys. Where's Mozzie at? He's probably around like 80. Um, where are you, Mozzie? I definitely passed him. Uh, Mozzie spent 73. So I don't even think RJ Moan's in here. This has not been updated for some of the guys who have decided to return as well in the past week. But uh, yeah, no, Mozzie Smith, such a good get, such a good get. Pick number 44. The Titans, man, in the first round, did we not go Quentin Johnston? That'd be so sick. We did. Awesome. Never go that route. So it's just fun to see it. Somebody who I think is such a good player for and a good fit for this team is Cody Mock. Like it is one of my dream fits. Really good on the move. Very good run blocker. The only issue is the translatable tape is just not there because he usually likes to block the second level. But when you think about like when I watch Cody Mock, I think of Tennessee Titans and I think about 
honestly, I just think about the Tennessee Titans. I really do. It's one of those things I cannot fully explain it, but like when you watch him, you feel like he's a Tennessee Titan. And um, it's going to be one of those guys I just take. We're going to go with it. We're saying Javon Foster is returning for the time being. Again, Jim Nagy said that his camp was alerted that he's thinking about returning. That's why he didn't get an invite to the Senior Bowl. So, you know, it is what it is. Pick 45 for the Patriots. Of course, we go tackle in the first round. I think wide receiver definitely at least should be on the table with someone of Josh Downs' caliber. Romo Dunze is still in the mix. There's still some really good players in here. Really good. And I think you can wait till the third round for that if you are Bill. So I want to look at edge rusher because the talent is so damn good. And I still have somebody who I have in my top 15, and that's Felix on DK Uzama. Nolan Smith is such a good player as well. I love Nolan Smith. You guys get to see him there at number 42 on my board. Really big fan of the guy. But like Felix, I mean, I'll show y'all. I'll show y'all where I have him. Felix is there at 13. Just an absolute, absolute stud. Just sometimes the edge class is so plentiful that good players fall. Uh, pick number 46 for the Jets. Another spot where I would have loved Jail Skinner to fall. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got off to tackle there with, what, did we get Peter Skronsky for this team? We did not. Pretty sure it was Paris Johnson. So yeah, Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson. Um, so offensive line, already addressed. This team doesn't need much. It really doesn't. Like, I would say safety, but there's just nobody even remotely worth it. I would say linebacker. That's probably where I'm going. And, um, you got guys like Cedric Gray here, who I have not studied yet. Want to see that all 22 on him. Jack Campbell. Possible. Possible. Honestly, Cedric Gray we're going to do tonight. So come on to the Discord. Yeah, I'm recording this at 1 p.m. So if you guys are seeing this, probably like, oh, wow. Uh, we're going to do it tonight. I'm going to put my money on it. We're going we're gonna to watch him tonight. Uh, Noah Sewell in the mix as well. We're going to go Jack Campbell. I want a solid dude to be a commander of the defense. I feel like he's a solid type of guy. Really good player, and he's improved his athleticism as well as his play. So definitely love that for him. Uh, Steelers, I want to test out the interior list. Uh, Kalijah Kansi's 280 pounds. Does not feel like he's going to be a guy to plug the middle. Uh, Tyler Davis, though, definitely feel like he could be a Steeler. Definitely feel like he could. And he's honestly really good at stuffing the run. Uh, for this mock, uh, man, can I say Jerzon Newton's going to return? I don't think he is. I think he might come out. Based on the fact he got all frustrated with the PFF rankings, he might come out. Uh, but he is a true junior. We're going to assume he returns. We're going to assume he returns for this. Just again, he's a true junior. And he's not getting hype. Usually that's what they do. And that sucks because you guys see, I mean, you guys don't even get to see how high he is on my board. He's right here at number 39. Needs to get more respect. But um, Tyler Davis, because of the fact that I just removed Jerzon Newton, Tyler Davis is going to be the move. We need help on that interior, getting some pressure, as well as some help in the run defense. I think getting somebody of Tyler Davis's talent, who I think is better than Brian Breezy, definitely should be considered there. So when looking at it, you got uh, Clark Phillips, Tyler Davis, as well as Peter Skronsky. That's a nice chunk of dudes to make a big impact. Pick number 48 for the Packers. Another spot where I wish I can go safety. I got to admit. But... Chris Abrams drain that kills me. He returned. Uh, that's that would be my guy. I'm also thinking Eli Ricks probably going to return. Like I have it over here on another screen. If you guys see my eyes darting, I'm making sure that some of these guys have not completely declared because it would be great to see some of these guys. I'm like, yeah, they're not coming out and they declare. So tackle wise, did not see Javon Foster there. Interior defensive line. Um, and wow, I did not know Kalaja Kansi actually have fully committed to coming out. Great for him, but. Uh, who am I going to check out here? Eli Ricks. I want to check out the corners just to make sure. Like, if he decided to come out, which I don't think he... Yeah, he has not declared. So, I'm going to say he stays. I'm going to say he stays. Because um, I would love to transfer him to safety. That's what I'm getting at right now. They don't need a corner, but I want to transfer somebody to safety. Edge rusher, I think we already got Tyree Stevenson with our last pick. Um, I, why the hell? Why? With their first round two selection. What morons have Tyree Wilson on the board? <gasps> but I have my favorite player for him on the board. Awesome. So, yes, we all know that tight end is a huge feature on the squad. Luke Musgrave, such a steal. Darnell, D uh, Dalton Kincaid, such a steal. Darnell Washington, the perfect fit. And he plays like a tackle. I love him. Uh, 49, 
I know y'all don't need it, but I really want you to consider Luke Musgrave because he is such a good player. Like, I am hyped as shit about him. But we need to help out the defense. We do. Edge rusher, still, we still need to try to address that. Uh, Lucas Van Ness with that later second round pick or third round pick, that seems like a good guy to put in there. Uh, super high ceiling, good against the run. Carl Brooks, he's 300 pounds, so someone you can kick to the interior too. That'd be fun. Not for this pick, but um, for that 61, I really like the idea of waiting on someone like Carl Brooks. That'd be really cool. We're going to do that. We're definitely going to do that. But um, for this pick, we're going to go with linebacker here. We're going to pair the brothers back up. Noah Sewell pairing up with Penny Sewell. Maybe you guys can try to snag Nephi Sewell from whether he's on like UDFA or something like that. Um, or UDA. But is it? No, it's not UDA. <laughs> free agency. I'm like, wait a second. That was undrafted agency. But... Uh, yeah, you guys can try to bring all the brothers together there. Noah Sewell, he's one hell of a good player. People underrate him left, right, and center. Pick number 50 for the Jaguars. Uh, this, like, if you guys don't bring back uh, Evan Ingram, and he's going to ask for a nice price tag, this, my comp for him is probably Evan Ingram this year. Like, this is this year's Evan Ingram. So I'm taking him. Perfect fit. You guys get to see how much, like, Trevor Lawrence loves a speedy-ass tight end. He could run in the four threes. If I'm going to be honest, he burns like he's a burner. Uh, he's probably going to run in the four fours or low four fives. But if he runs in the four three, if he doesn't like four three nine, I wouldn't be that shocked. Like that's how good of a player he is. Love him. Pick number 51. So quarterback was not the pick that we went after. Who did we go after? I thought we went after Jalen Johnson or not Jalen Johnson, Antonio Johnson. So love that for us. Now, Nolan Smith is a great player. Isaiah Foskey, I have my reservations. But Dalton Kincaid is such a good player. Are we going to go tight end, tight end, tight end? No, we got linebacker in there. We're going to go Dalton Kincaid here. It's pretty obvious once Gronk left, the tight end group just eh. And you kind of want to give a guy a really reliable target, and I would love for Dalton Kincaid to do that. I don't know if we... I think that Cam Rising said he was returning. I'm not sure, but Cam Rising, if he does actually come out, that would be a great target in the later rounds for you. And I don't even think it needs to be necessarily the later rounds. Wow, there's so few quarterbacks that have decided to declare. That's crazy. But I don't think you have to... I like. I think Cam Rising might be a good third round, fourth round pick for you. That'd be a really nice connection that you have. I would love that for you. Pick number 52 for Washington. Uh, did he say he was transferring? I want to check this one thing, and um, I don't see his name on the list. I don't. We'll see if he comes out. But Washington, the commanders, we went offensive line round one, did we not? I feel like we went after Antonio Johnson. We went Michael Mayer. Ooh, nice little change up. See, it's good when I surprise myself, too. Guard, I think, wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, Luke, John Michael Schmitz is such a good player. You guys know exactly where I have these guys. I have it 40 as well as 34. Sometimes you just see really good players and want to draft other ones. They keep it fresh. Uh, Luke Whipler, I think, would be more solidified as a guard, but I really can totally see John Michael Schmitz being a nice addition here for Washington. Does not need to beat out Chase Ruye. He can be a guard for you. Uh, just a nice little change up there. And this actually might be Luke Whipler. I think the, I think the value is there. Let's go Luke Whipler. Definitely a really good guy to, I know he doesn't have to play center. Again, another guy's center guard versatility, interior offensive line. That's what all that matters. Pick number 54 for the New York Giants. Uh, traded up for AR, and y'all are clamoring, who is he going to throw to? Could throw to Josh Downs. But I think that you already have a nice slot. Um, this is my buddy Raw, goes to SMU, pony up. I do too, hallelujah. But, well, not hallelujah. We've been kind of crap recently. I digress. He doesn't seem like a guy who'd be really good in the cold. I see enough Snapchat videos of him complaining about it being like 35. I don't really think that sending him up north would be the ideal fit. So I'm not going to do that. However, I do love the idea of maybe sending Xavier Hutchinson to this team in the next round. Or um, like Zay Flowers would be a great addition because he can play on the outside as well. Trey Palmer in another round. There's good players to add to this receiving room that I don't need to right now. Uh, there's still some corners here, and I think Emmanuel Forbes would be a nice get. A uh, really good ball hawk, and I think that Wink Martindale would be pretty happy to have him in the system. Pick 55 for the Chargers. 
Let's double check to see if anybody is left on my first round. Uh, so far, no. Javon, I'm assuming he's returning. I'm leaving him there for the time being. But so far, I think he's returning. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson and Justin Shorter and a Lusagoon. So honestly, this wouldn't be a bad team for a Lusagoon, to be fair. But the Chargers, we ended up getting Jordan Addison in round one. I want to see the defensive interiors who are available because I do think it did fall off a cliff. I don't like Siaki Ika. I'm sorry. I really don't. I have him almost as a UDFA grade. He got worse this year. And again, if you guys want to see why I think that, come to the Discord and ask me. We'll we'll pop it up. We'll do it. Um, but Gervon Dexter, another guy who's just fallen off a cliff. I really like the idea of Clyde Jacansi, but you really need just somebody to stuff the middle, and I can get that in a later round. So other positions to target, linebacker. I definitely think there's still some good dudes on the board. I still have Ivan Pace here, who's a very good player, won the Linebacker of the Year award. Cedric Gray, certainly in that mix. But it really doesn't matter. You can go tight end here as well with Sam Laporta. I think the tight end class falls off a pretty sharp cliff after this. And um, we'll, we'll do it. We're going to go full offensive weapons here. They're saying, you know what? We're going balls deep on her. Mm, no, no, pause. We are going all in on Herbert. There we go. Uh, so Sam Laporta going to be the guy. This is going to be an edge rusher for the Bears. We waited. We got Jalen Carter. Now we can get the edge rusher of our dreams. There's so many good ones um, that I don't really think it really matters. Like You can get Tuli Tupelotu for this team for sure. But, I mean, it makes sense to go after someone like Isaiah Foskey, someone who's bigger, more athletic. I think a team's going to draft him if he's at this point. So going to be the dude who I go after. Uh, pick 57. Did I go after an edge rusher? I think I went after a linebacker and Drew Sanders. Let's go. Nolan Smith is a perfect fit. Hell yes. Oh, yeah. We just totally revamped this defense. We got star corner, star edge rusher, and a star linebacker. Um, I just get excited when you get to actually totally revamp a team. And we just did with those three picks. Nolan Smith's such a good player. Love him to death. Pick number 58 for the Cowboys. Uh, first round was Brian Breezy. I think Josh Downs is a perfect T.Y. Hilton replacement. And, um, you know, maybe you can try to kick him to the outside. Maybe it should have been Zay Flowers, but it's really not going to be that big of a difference. I think Josh Downs has played pretty well on the outside in the few reps that he has, and he's proven enough to me. I like him. Pick number 59. So this was a tackle last round, and that was definitely a big need for this team. I like the idea of going Cedric Gray here just because of the fact I haven't studied him. I'll probably go off of their board until his scouting report's official. Uh, tight end-wise, man, we just, we like siphoned the hell out of the tight ends in this draft. We just sucked them all out. Pause. Um, but edge rusher, I do think that you could try to get someone like Lucas Van Ness and add him to that nasty front. I think that you could also look in the corner room. And I just... Man, I can't get excited about these corners. I really, I was trying to go and try to find some corners for you guys. This is a tough spot. I think we should trade out. I do. There's still some great players on the board. There's still some great running backs too. We're seeing guys like, oh my God, is Jameer Gibbs still on the board? Son of a biscuit. Um, we're trading up with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> we're having Dallas Cowboys trade up all the way from their pick. Yeah, they're, they're going to be ballsy on this one. Uh, Jameer is going to be the pick, but um, we are going to be sending in a next year third as well as um, a next year fourth. We're, we're going to force this trade. It's going to be an absolutely insane trade, but the Cowboys are going to do it. They're trading up to be able to get a running back. This is a deep running back class. Do not be surprised if this does happen, but Jameer Gibbs, uh, you could have traded up for using a next year second. Don't think that's going to be necessarily the case here because you are trading up with a third, so it's a 3-3-4. Three, three, Again, it's not going to affect this mock draft apart from that third round pick, but Jameer Gibbs is going to be that nice revamp to that offense. Pick number 60 for the Chiefs. I saw him on the board, and I was like, dude, I have to be able to replace Tony Pollard. Have to. Um, Kalijah Kansi would be really nice as a pass rushing interior. I think that's great. We went after Isaiah McGuire, who's a really good run stopper. Uh, stopper. We're going to go Kalijah Kansi here. It's a nice little shift on the guy that we get. Pick 61. So, again, we have gone after a linebacker. We've gone after a corner. And um, what do we go with that other first round pick? We went after a running back in Bijan. So we're looking pretty good. I think now would be a pretty good time to go after someone who kicked to the inside, 
or keep on the outside, does not matter. Keon White certainly is somebody who should be at least considered, but Carl Brooks, absolute beast. This man can have like a 15 pressure game out of nowhere. A uh, really good hand technique, kind of like the Bowling Green version of Jerzon Newton. So yeah, he, p- he plays edge at 300. Probably going to kick to the inside, but uh, definitely somebody where you can at least test where he should be. And uh, I like his overall effect on the game. Pick 62 for the Bills. Woo. I mean, what do we do in the first round? Now I'm trying to, now my memory's slipping. Osiris Torrance, love that for us. So with Osiris Torrance gone, I think you could try to look for look at a power back here. Wide receiver would not be a bad option with Zay Flowers. You do bring, you brought Cole Beasley back. I think that'd be a really cool option. Continue to invest in the offense here. Zay Flowers out of Boston College, really, really good player. And then ending off the second round, the Philadelphia Eagles are sitting here. Traded back, you got Garrett Williams. Um, you know, you're sitting pretty. Jared Verse, Garrett Williams, and extra picks. Pretty damn nice. Now, I do think you could try to look for a future option at right tackle, but probably not in the second round. Dewan Jones is very intriguing for a team that's good at developing offensive line, but I don't think it's necessary. You could look at all interior offensive line with Christian Hayes or Lusagoon to be able to be that center of the future. I know you got uh, Beef Jurgens there, but you do probably need somebody to eventually stand up and play that other guard spot in time uh, where Sumalu is, but I'm not going to force it either. Safety, there's just nobody good. Nobody good. This is a weird spot. This is another spot where I think Howie might want to trade back. You could try to look at, I think now would be a good time to look at a running back. This is a good time. Let's go after Devon A-Chain. Uh, just 424 tested speed, absolute demon. If you're not going to get Jameer Gibbs, you're going to get Devon A-Chain. So that's going to be the video. Stay tuned tomorrow for round three. See you guys on the far side. Peace.